a new week brings a new leader of the Ukraine. Over the weekend, the nation's parliament selected Alexander Torchinov to take over after President Viktor Yanukovych fled Kiev. There's a warrant now out for Yanukovych's arrest and plans for a new round of elections by May 25th. Meantime, the nation's interim leader says the Ukrainian economy is, quote, rolling down into an abyss. So how will the nation move ahead? For more, we go now live to Jack Barton in Kiev. Jack, what's the latest there? Well, that's right. A few years ago, when global commodity prices were much higher, the Ukrainian economy was actually growing at a fair pace. But right now, it's mired in recession. And uh, today, we heard from the acting prime minister saying the treasury is empty. So it's very clear at this point that not only does Ukraine need to find some long-term solutions, it also needs to find some money in the next few weeks to really try and resurrect Ukraine from its current economic rubble. Author and mother of two, Irina Karpa, is one of thousands of Ukrainians who attended rallies against former ruler Viktor Yanukovych. She says the government's heavy-handed repression was the match that lit the fuse, but that unrest also stemmed from a wider problem. Economic causes, all the social wages, they were not paid properly. For example, if you speak about older people, uh, every pensioner got robbed for around 100 euro every month. The country has fallen from more than 5% GDP growth in 2011 to its current recession. Igor Popov, who worked with former Prime Minister Yulia Tymoshenko, tells me one reason for this is the price of Ukraine's key export steel has halved over the past few years. There are no good solutions for macroeconomics uh, because macroeconomics uh, depends mainly from the export and uh, our export not in a good position now. But he says there is one thing the government can do to make a difference in the short term. Most needed reform in Ukraine now uh, fighting with corruption. Uh, because previous government uh, collected a lot of money, maybe the second budget of Ukraine. The cleanup has started, but it won't be enough. The ratings agency Standard and Pause has downgraded Ukraine, stating that the country will default if there is not a significant favorable improvement in the country's circumstances. Russia has halted desperately needed funding that had been keeping the country afloat. But analysts are now cautiously optimistic. Whatever happens from today onwards, it's going to be going in a more positive direction. Uh, and I would imagine we're going to quickly see financial uh, economic assistance coming from the West. An optimism shared by those who demonstrated against the Yanukovych government. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's going to take one year, maybe it's going to take two years, but Ukraine will, will establish the yeah. right state of life. In the meantime, Ukraine faces social division, political uncertainty, and a rough economic road ahead. Jack Barton, CCTV, Kiev. Well, the Ukrainian currency, the Grivnia, had been very much overvalued in the past few years, but this year it's fallen 9% against the US dollar. Uh, that would normally be seen as a good thing, but the, it, the free fall has prompted people to start taking out of their savings to try and convert it into more stable currencies like the US dollar and the euro. This has caused a run on the bank. So what should have been good for the economy, that lowering in the value of the currency, has actually been adding extra pressure. Is this an abyss? It seems like a pretty good word given what you're describing. How much money does Ukraine need to avoid default this year, and what are the chances of getting that money? Well, today, the acting uh, Prime Minister Alexander Torchinov said that the country would need $35 billion to get it through this year and the next, and it would need a portion of that money in the coming weeks. We've heard from the U.S. officials, we've heard from the EU and the International Monetary Fund, all of them saying they are prepared to deliver some rescue funding, though the IMF making it clear that would come with tough reforms attached. But what they haven't said is how much money and when it could come. But what we do know as of today is that Russia is not recognizing the interim government. 
That means that uh, the Russia's emergency funding will no doubt be cut. On top of that, Russia could raise gas prices, which have been kept low under the previous administration. It could even cut the supply of gas. That would have an uh, enormous impact on industry here. So, uh, you know, 35 million is the figure that the uh, Prime Minister is presenting under the current circumstances. But if Russia starts turning off those gas taps, that figure could in, uh, increase, no doubt. Thanks very much, Jack Barton, reporting from Kiev.